advocating that we shouldn't cut back in this age of teaching science, teaching math, whatever, teaching arts in the schools. Uh, well, why is that? If you don't know who you are, it doesn't really make a difference what you do. Yeah. Like, uh, if I would rather you know who you are and not worry about competing with, Ch with the Chinese than you don't know and you think you're competing with somebody. Because... When you don't know who you are, you don't know how to put your, you, you don't know where to place your gifts. Like it's interesting. Uh, we're here, we're talking about Bob Tish. He obviously knew where to place his gifts. He had gifts. He was bringing people together. And uh, he went, he could have funded getting all of the fields for the kids himself. Mm -hmm. He wanted the people to come together around the issue. He wanted to be an example of that. Lou Rudin, he was talking about him. Bob and Lou, I love Lou. I think about Lou all the time. Jack, I love Jack. That's my man. Mm -hmm. He and I go up to DeWitt Clinton High School and be principals for a day, and the school is all black now. So I'd ask him, you know, Jack, why you still come up here? He said, man, I graduated from, this is where I'm from. Mm -hmm. And I'm still from here. I said, you got to work on your jump shot. <laughs> but L Lou and, and, and New York institutions, you see Lou, Bob, it's a certain feeling that they bring with them. And that feeling is, is uh, the feeling of, of bringing people together. That's what the arts are. They create the feeling of community. You take that first person sitting around a campfire, lying about some Mastodon or something, <laughs> singing a song about it, saying they did something. They didn't do it, but they, they should have done it. And that creates, and the person who hears that song, this 10 years old, I'm going to go out and get this Mastodon <laughs> like he did. And that's how we progress. We create the mythology of the thing, and then we live that mythology as if it's real. Mm -hmm. And it becomes real. And when we have a reverse and inverse mythology, we create a negativity and an ignorance, and we take the worst of what we are, and we hold that up. Because mm -hmm. we all have a worst. But why should we present that? Mm -hmm. We all have a best, too. Do you think there's a distinction between high culture and popular culture when it comes to music, or should there be a distinction? Or maybe to ask it in a simpler way, I mean, why did Bix Beiderbeck's parents, why were they disappointed in him? Well, they, they, Bix Beiderbeck's parents were disappointed in him out of ignorance. Okay, but Matisse's parents were disappointed in him out of ignorance. And there's a level of ignorance that affects all of us mm -hmm. when it comes to things that we don't know about. And in the arts in general, if you if you're interested in someone making money and they come and tell you, I'm going to play trumpet in a jazz band. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and as a guy from Iowa and he's playing music that's equated with black people who are, of course, scorned and treated with the maximum amount of disrespect you mm -hmm. could have in our culture. And you're a father, a mother of a kid. You think, what? Mm -hmm. You're going to do what? <laughs> and that's what they thought. The cruelty that was done to him was that he sent them recordings and they didn't listen to him. So I take that example even when I deal with my own kids, that when they come up with something that I really don't like and I really want to just commit an act of violence on them, I listen to it before I do the violence. <laughs> then I say, I heard it. But, I mean, there's a lesson in that. And with Matisse's uh, father, it was the same way. Why you... Why don't you want to continue? Are you talking about rap music to some extent? Oh, you know, music? rap music, whatever the form is that you don't like. Right. Wearing your pants what do you down. you rap music? I think yeah. rap music is a great extension of rock and roll. Mm -hmm. And I feel that I don't look at anything separate from the entire context of it in music because that's my field. And when you start with a mythology, it is rebel without a cause, a celebration of a certain type of amateurism, mm -hmm. a nihilistic take on... Uh, certain aspects of your culture, devaluing the, the rhythm section, all kind of stuff I could talk about that happened in our music long before rap. Right. S volume replacing, uh, volume being the replacement of power, something as loud is going to impose itself on you no matter what it is. A mm -hmm. uh, uh, lack of emphasis on musical skill then you start to get to down that road that's going to lead you to where we where we find ourselves now. But we can go right back up that road. And that's the thing that we're always kind of concentrating on collectively, all the music teachers and everyone who's involved in arts advocacy and music education. How can we go back up the road? How can we? Just 
the way we do it, we want to lose weight. <laughs> we just stop eating bread and start exercising. <laughs> That's what... Yeah, it could be challenging. I mean, uh, you talk about de-emphasizing the rhythm section. In some ways, the great music that you grew up appreciating had syncopation, which is a complex form of rhythm. I mean, you yeah. want to explain syncopation? Well, syncopation has always been in American music. You start off with the early, with fiddle bands. You go back to the early 1800s. Or like a piece like Boil em Cabbage Down. Now when you syncopate it, you go... It's America. Bravo. See? <laughs> Can you? It's American. It's, it's not like Mark O'Connor is a great fiddler today. He's from Seattle. Yeah. He and I are contemporaries. We talk all the time about the the the, the Afro American traditions, the Anglo American traditions. And he he started playing boiling cabbage down in a rehearsal we were having. We, we happened to be in France. He didn't want to stop playing it. We had to say, "Man, stop!" <laughs> you know, some of the great old music brought a lot of strands together. Jazz, in particular. Uh, do you see that there's some types of music that bring races together, bring different types of people together, and some that kind of divide and bring us into little segments? You know, I don't, I don't ever find music divide us. Mm -hmm. I find that maybe the marketing of music will divide us. And I find that most musics around the world are trying to bring people together. Most musicians want to do that. Is that the role of the artist, in a way, as a leader? That's what we like to do. Like, if I can tell you a story, make you laugh, I want you to laugh, yeah. you know? If I can play a trumpet or something and people get around and say, let me check this trumpet out. If I can remember, if I remember something that you might remember too, I want you to remember that. Mm -hmm. If I can make you feel a certain way, it makes me feel good to make you feel like that. Mm -hmm. So if I can make a thousand people feel that way, I want to do that. I mean, it makes me feel like I'm doing something worthwhile with whatever ability I've been given. And I think people many times have that ability and they know they have it when they're younger. It might not manifest in their art form, but it just manifests in their life. In, in you know, that leads to what we sometimes call the Tish question, which Laurie Tish <laughs> asked that we asked because you just touched on it, which is how do you hope the world will be a different place because of you being here? Well, I think, uh, I don't know, I want to, I've seen grandiose. You know, you say, I know, well, I, that's, why, that's why I made Laurie take the blame <laughs> for it. I'm afraid, but I, I do, I, I think that through my, my, uh, through, through my, my virtuosity or what, what, I, what I developed just when I was a younger person and the, the desire and the willingness to practice and, and spend time trying to develop my artistry on my instrument, I hope for all the musicians, all the younger people that I've had a chance to inspire, they listen to me, I want to leave them inspired that you can... Uh, that, that you can work on something and be consistent and believe in something and do it. And in playing classical music, coming from Kenner, Louisiana, not really having anybody around me playing like that, being inspired by the great Maurice Andre, who was from France, that there are people all over the world who are inspired by something that they think may be remote for their culture. And they understand it's not remote because it's in the realm of the human. Mm -hmm. And in all the collaborative pieces that we've done, uh, like, Blood on the Fields or Congo Square that we did with an African a, a group from Ghana or what we did with the Flamenco Jazz Ensemble and Chano Dominguez or our friends Igor Bootman from Russia bring their big band to play with us. I hope that the people who get around it understand the feeling of love of Mark, Mark O'Connor and I, the genuine love and respect that we have for each other. And when we start playing, it's not a slogan that we are playing together. Or uh, Willie Nelson and I, we talk about it all the time. How somebody would think it's funny because he has a cowboy hat on or something, and I have a suit, and I'm whatever years younger than him, we're that much different, but we play the same music. He's from Texas, I'm from Louisiana. And whoever busted him another day should be. That's, right. that's just bad manners. <laughs> that was just an example of bad manners, man. <laughs> so, you know, through that, I, I like to do that. And uh, to, 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 and in terms of what we have achieved uh, in New York with Jazz at Lincoln Center, people of all different walks of life. Like when I first met Lisa Schiff or Gordon Davis or many people I have the, the honor and privilege to work with, I had never really met people outside of music. Mm -hmm. And that we could come together and work 
and perform a civic duty and provide. Uh, and for all the people I've taught, kids, I've taught thousands of them all through the years. Just I hope I transmitted some of that love and feeling. That's right. I won't just lose that. <laughs> that they that they felt a certain type of love and a seriousness about that to them. 